What is up everybody and welcome. In today's video, we're gonna be taking a very special look at this Andre Thorburn L36M. I picked this knife up at Blade Show of 2018, just a couple of weeks ago. And this video is gonna sort of serve as uh, uh, an example of some of the changes that Andre is making to his lineup as he continues to modernize his knives. Some of the changes I'm not a huge fan of, but uh, we're gonna take a look here. So first of all, uh, if you just want a general video on the L36M, you can go back uh, to some older videos that I have of this knife and the L36M I had even before that. Uh, and this is mostly going to be a comparison to Andre's older knives to uh, sort of what he brought to the table at Plate Show of 2018. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. Obviously, this knife matches the two other Thorburns that I have pretty well. Um, so let's go ahead and get these sort of out of the way. So uh, real quick, let's just go ahead and talk about the action on this piece. Of course, knife actions have some variability uh, sort of across the board. And this knife, I would say, represents the absolute best action in my collection right now. Has the traditional Thorburn thwack to the max. And this particular knife is uh, pretty Grimsmo in terms of how it drops shut. The deployment is absolutely echoing through my office. Uh, this knife, it's, it's hard to show you with this video angle, but I am getting this knife uh, with just pure gravity to close against gravity, uh, sort of like what I demonstrated in my Grimsmo Norseman video. And so uh, it's got a super impressive action. Of course, you take a look at this finishing work on this beautiful Mylar carbon fiber. This is a zirconium bolster. You can see with some polished sections and then mostly stippled and colored. Mariki does an excellent job. Those traditional teal liners, red G10 slivers, G10 backspacer, file work. So let's get into a couple of these changes. The first thing to note is the size. Uh, this L36M, pretty thick knife, and to be frank, my L42 is pretty thick as well. And uh, so Andre has sort of sprinkled, whoa, that's not a fun look. So Andre has sort of sprinkled um, some slim versions of his models in his lineups in the past. It's not something he always does, but I do know that, uh, in general, the opinion these days is that uh, slimmer is better on the knife market. Now, I'm personally opposed to that. Uh, you know, I collect Larevos and the thickest Thorburns I can find and whatever. I love, love, love thick knives. But I understand that uh, in the marketplace, people definitely want something a little bit slimmer and that slides in the pocket just that much better. So if we get the L42 out of the way... Just take a look here. You can see it's pretty significant. And so ultimately, uh, this knife feels a lot thinner in the hand. You can see my fingers make contact with the uh, butt of my palm here. And on this knife, well, it's a, it's a, if I squeeze, it makes contact, but you can see it's a little further out than uh, just automatic contact here. So, I don't know. Thinner is thinner better. You guys tell me in the comments down below. Now, uh, if you're looking closely, you might be able to see the next difference, which is going to be that he has updated his logo. Now, the newer logo 
is smaller. It is thicker. Uh, and well, it just maybe appears to be thicker uh, because it's smaller. But what you maybe can't see on camera is that the new one is darker, uh, more solid. Uh, and you can see he has traded out the Bella Bella South African uh, verbiage for just the word custom. And uh, ultimately, I'm not really a fan. I like the original. Uh, I honestly, even though I like smaller logos, for some reason I feel like the bigger one just fits better um, with the, the sort of plunge grind on these knives. Uh, and I don't know, I like the Bella Bella South Africa aspect of it. Andre, I believe, is considering moving to the U.S., but I don't know. You can still represent your roots. I don't like the word custom so much, uh, but that's all personal opinion, obviously. Uh, and then the third change is really kind of hard to notice at first. But let's see if you can tell when I do this. the flats on his knives are no longer full mirror. So you can see here, uh, you get a pretty clear, if you look at my face, you can see like my hair is a mess and everything. And uh, it's a pretty clear reflection because it is a near perfect mirror. And in the newer knives, I noticed he's got a satin finish. Now it's a a little bit of a higher satin than the bevel, so there is still an alternation, but you can see it's a little blurry, it's a little dull, and you can actually see the satin lines in the finish. Uh, and from what I can remember, all the knives pretty much, unless they were deliveries uh, that were at Blade Show had this, and I also believe that every knife I've seen before that has the mirror flat. You can see the L42 has the mirror flat as well. Although, actually, maybe shit. It actually doesn't. This actually has the old logo, but is equally satin. I hadn't noticed that before. Son of a bitch. All right, well, this is what happens when you don't uh, check yourself before you start recording. All right, so I guess that's something that maybe he's been doing. This knife isn't particularly old. But man, I really prefer the full mirror. Uh, the only thing I'd say I like the satin better for is photographs, um, but just in terms of ownership, the mirror is so cool. And so much more distinct and classy and just, I don't know. Andre comes in at an excellent price point, so if um, super tiny corners need to be cut, then I suppose I understand. Um, but from a collector perspective, I think in the future, uh, I'm going to look for knives that have the full mirror flat because that's just something that I prefer. And again, I, I don't know, I just like the bigger logo and everything. Um, something else to point out actually, now that I'm remembering, is the clip. So um, these 3D clips, whether he has the straight one or the curved one, are pretty freaking sturdy. Let's see here. That definitely takes some effort. Um, it's pretty thick, and you can see it's got quite a bit of tension. Pretty solid. You can flick it and nothing happens. Same is true of this one. Now, this newer clip that he's got is very similar, but you can see it doesn't have the flute or any of the details. It's just flat. And it's a little uh, springy. You can kind of hear it. And uh, I'm definitely not as much of a fan of that. So that is something to consider. Um, you know, I really don't like seeing regression when it comes to knives. But uh, again, as you guys saw in my um, sort of best of Blade Show video, Andre is still just such an incredible value. It doesn't, I mean, even with the changes that have been made to the knives, it's still such an incredible value. So I can't really knock him too much for that, but I thought it would be interesting to point out some of these differences to you guys so that you can see some of the updates that have been made to the lineup and so that you can make those considerations when you are looking at buying previously owned knives. So uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know it was a bit of a, a bit of a different one, a bit slow, but um, yeah, thanks so much for watching. Of course, if you'd like to see beautiful 
beautiful pictures of these knives, you can do so by following me on Instagram at Tavarish Works. And if you'd like to reach out to me for any reason whatsoever, you can do so by emailing me at tovarishworks at gmail.com. Thanks so much for watching, guys, and I will see you next time.